Hi friends. I hope you're having a great day. It's a new season. It's been a couple months and I have a new list of fashion things I have been super into and excited about lately. Some of which are trends and some of which might just be having a moment for me personally. All of which I am very excited to talk about today. So let's get started. Oh, also I'm announcing the personal styling giveaway winner today. Go check for that community post. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to go watch my last video. Okay, now let's get started. First up, I've already mentioned this in a couple videos recently, but I have been absolutely loving the double bag look lately. I always like to change outfits to match the trend I'm talking about in these videos, but it's kind of hard when the trend is a bag. Specifically, I am into sort of a smaller mini little bag slung onto one of the straps of a larger bag. I just think there is something so eclectic and fun about this. It brings to mind like cargo style for me, lots of pockets. It's kind of like adding an extra pocket to your bag. It also weirdly reminds me of like horse saddlebags, so it feels sort of adventurous to me as though I am riding a horse, or maybe as though I am the horse. Like I said, I've styled looks with this feature in a couple recent videos, but I have yet to actually wear it out, partly because I just don't go places that often. But also I think I am still getting over feeling a little self-conscious about doing something that seems kind of extra. I feel like there's such a trivialization of fashion and doing anything different and out of the ordinary is automatically seen as ridiculous and superfluous and impractical, even though like adding more storage to your outfit is objectively more practical. I'm trying to get over like my internalization of that <laughs> kind of attitude and I will have to wear this out next time I have stuff to carry. The next thing which you may be shocked to hear that I am really into is barrel jeans. These jeans are so polarizing and I think maybe it just depends on how dramatic of a silhouette you're picturing because I feel like I've been hearing about barrel jeans for at least a year at this point, specifically from Daily Helen. Shout out to her. But when I saw her talk about them, she was always referring to jeans that look like this. Quite a subtle barrel shape, almost a straight leg, but just like a little wider and then just slightly tapered in at the ankles. And now all of a sudden I've been seeing so many people talking about barrel jeans, but they seem to be referring to something more like this, which is, I guess, the same idea, but taken to such extreme dramatic proportions that it does look goofy. But a subtler version of this, I really, really like. Honestly, as I looked up different images of barrel jeans for this video, I felt more and more like maybe the term is meaningless because like you're telling me these are barrel jeans, but these are also barrel jeans and these are also barrel jeans. I don't know, fashion marketing is a mess, but this version is the one I first saw described with this term and therefore to me, it's the right one. And I really like how these look. That said, Will I buy any? Probably not because I already have two pairs of blue jeans. And frankly, I don't wear jeans often enough to need more than that. So the only way I think I would end up with these is if I happened to need another pair of jeans and then these happened to be the ones that I found. I won't be actively seeking them out is my point here, but I am admiring from afar. I like the silhouette. I think it looks comfy and relaxed, but still a little tailored and intentional because it has that distinct shape. I'm into it. Okay, the next thing I have gotten super into in the past handful of months is chunky necklaces. Specifically necklaces that have some substance or weight sort of throughout around the neck, not just a pendant in the middle. And it has to be a chunky necklace that is quite short, that falls like around my collarbones, not down here. I have been wearing this mismatched beaded necklace I made myself that sort of fits this description very regularly pretty much since I made it a year and a half ago. But that was kind of it in the realm of interesting necklaces for me. So I decided to level up my necklace game in 2024. I still love this one, but I have since added a few more to my collection. This pearl collar one you saw in my last thrift haul. This charm necklace I also made myself that you saw in my last DIY video. And this gorgeous new baby from the Etsy shop, Surreal Alchemy. This is not sponsored at all, but the creator behind the shop, Annie, is a viewer. And she just reached out to me and asked me if she could send me a piece. And then I looked at her shop and said, yes, please. I would love that. These are the funky, whimsical, eclectic jewelry of my dreams. So here she is. I love her so much. She is the perfect, unique, yet versatile addition to my accessory options, and I am very excited to find so many ways to style this. Oh, and Annie's Etsy shop will be linked in the description, of course. Thank you for sending me this, Annie. I love it. 
The next thing maybe goes hand in hand with the chunky, often handmade necklaces, and that is DIY and craft. As an aesthetic, as a value, as a lifestyle. I mean, this is really a forever thing for me. I have been DIYing and upcycling my clothes since I was like 14, but lately I have just been extra into it and wanted to give DIYs some love in this video. If you're wondering, I did DIY this shirt, I painted this flying eye on it, and I also embroidered this jacket. I've been making a lot of projects lately that I have really loved, and I also feel like I've been seeing more and more people online, fashion girlies across the internet, embracing DIY and crafting lately. I think this sort of relates to the trend towards like customization and personalization we've been seeing lately too. Those themes sort of flow together, and I love them both. I've been seeing more and more people having like cute DIY craft nights, trying visible mending, even sewing their own clothes, and every time I see it, it just makes me feel more inspired to do those things things too, which I think is just a great direction for fashion to move in general. I am all in favor of slow fashion, DIY, upcycling, mending, and just making things in general, especially with supplies that are already around. It's good for sustainability, it's good for minimizing consumption, it's good for your wallet, and it's good for your soul to make things. We love to see it. Okay, this next one might seem kind of out of left field, but it's something I've started to see pop up on various corners of the internet, and I'm really enjoying it. Netted caps. This is not what I mean, by the way. This is just the closest thing I had. If you haven't seen these, I mean those little, very thin, often loosely woven sort of skull caps that are quite fit in to the head. Usually they are relatively short like this. I also sort of associate them with the 70s and the 2000s. You get the picture, this style of hat. Something about this is just so chic to me. Besides the 70s and 2000s, it also really reminds me of like 1920s evening wear headpieces, which is just sort of the height of chicness. I guess that is exactly why it feels so chic. It's not a mystery. It's giving glamorous vintage nightlife. Literally nothing is chicer than that. And I love that it's sort of like a casual of that look for every day. That said, I would also love to see this look for going out and for nightlife. Like what a bold move to wear a hat in the club. I also feel like we're kind of seeing a trend in general towards hats and head accessories that are like very flatly fitted to the head. Swim cap vibes. Balaclavas, bonnets. I quite like them all. And this just feels like the next iteration of that. That's also ideal for spring and summer. Also, I just saw Dune 2 in theaters recently. Brag. And there were some looks like this in the Dune costuming on Florence Pugh specifically. I was like, does Dune 2 have something to do with this? I don't think it does. This was a thing before that movie came out, but it seems that that movie is also sort of participating in this trend, but in a costuming way, which is very cool. Like barrel jeans, this is something I do not own and probably won't buy unless I find like the perfect one to try it out at the thrift store, because honestly, I'm not totally convinced that this is super my style or that I would necessarily like how it looked on me. Although I like how this hat looks on me. So may maybe I would love it. I don't know. I'm kind of slowly convincing myself. The more I like looked at pictures of this look for this video, the more enchanted I became by it, honestly. Maybe I'll try to make one. Oh, that's also another DIY craft. It's all connected, baby. Okay, this next thing I'm loving is something I honestly have loved for ages, but I think it's sort of having a moment right now. And that is 60s in inspired mini dresses, baby doll dresses, shift dresses, sheath dresses. I have been seeing a ton of these styles lately and feeling very inspired. The sheath dress is so flattering. And then the more like baby doll shift dress looser shape is still so cute and also very comfortable and loose. This is sort of a 60s inspired baby doll dress. Wait, let me show you. Isn't it cute? I made this myself specifically for um, this video, by the way. I just love these kind of shapes because they feel so fun and playful, but still super chic. I also love that they're simple and easy to wear, but like still fun, not simple and boring. Comfortable, easy, and fun yet chic is kind of like the perfect description combination for pieces that I love and wear like the most in my wardrobe. So these dresses are just hitting every mark for me. I've seen quite a few other people talking about being into this style of dress lately. And for a while I was so confused because I kept seeing people describing this 60s mod shape as A-line, but I thought A-line meant fitted at the waist and the bodice and then flared out like this. And I feel like that's what it meant in like the 2010s. And if you Google image search A-line dress now, that's still probably what you'll get. But if you Google A-line dress 60s, you'll get something more like this. So I'm thinking maybe the 60s style is what A-line originally meant. And then it has sort of evolved to mean something else in more recent years. I don't know. I would describe these as like 
shift dresses, baby doll dresses, and sheath dresses, depending on how fitted they are. Sometimes those terms can overlap. A-line can probably overlap with all of them. But I would love to hear, like, what do you all think of when you hear A-line versus any of those other terms? Because I have certain connotations in my brain, and I don't know if they're just me. Language is fascinating and so confusing. Anyway, I already have a few dresses in my wardrobe that sort of fit within this range of silhouettes, so I do not need to get any more, but I am super excited to get some use out of the ones I have in the coming months. Finally, the last thing I am loving right now is actually something I had in my 2024 trend predictions video, fish motifs. And I gotta say, I have seen an increase in fish motifs in my feeds since that video. Although that may just be my algorithm because I'm already into them. Let me know if you've been seeing fish stuff in fashion lately. Regardless if it's a trend or just me, I am loving fish motifs right now. I think a fish motif just feels kind of whimsical. It's definitely giving like quaint summer in a charming coastal fishing village. It plays into the like rustic, cozy coastal grandpa thing, totally. And I also think part of the whimsy is that fish look shiny and sparkly because they're wet and they have scales, which feels sort of magical. I've also been seeing them especially in metal goods like jewelry, metal earrings, metal hair clips, that sort of thing. And I wonder if that's why, because it captures the like sparkly magicalness of fish. And a fish motif also just reminds me of like childhood summers spent in nature with my dad who fishes. It's kind of the ultimate mix of like aspirational and escapist and nostalgic that is the perfect cocktail to get me hooked. <laughs> I was gonna say pun not intended, but honestly, I, d I did that on purpose. I knew that was a pun. Pun intended, I'll say it. Obviously, I already have this fish dress I made myself like two summers ago. That was also in a video and I made a matching one for my family cat. I think the vast majority of you watching got here after I made that video, but I think that was a fun one. You can watch it right here. Anyway, I already have this fish dress. I also have this adorable little fish bag that I have genuinely had since childhood. A childhood friend got me this when we were like 10 and we're still friends and I still have the bag. So I look forward to using both of those pieces this spring and summer. And hey, if I happen across the perfect metallic fish earrings at the thrift store, I'm not saying no. Thanks for hanging out and chatting about fashion with me today. I hope you had fun listening to my enthusiasm for mostly things I either already have in my closet or I'm just enjoying from afar, but loving nonetheless. It's fun to talk about fashion you appreciate without feeling the need to acquire it, you know? Anyway, please tell me about some fashion you're loving right now in the comments. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, or TikTok, I'm trying to post more on TikTok. I'm doing a bad job, but I'm kind of scared of TikTok. I feel like it's a bunch of strangers over there, but it won't be a bunch of strangers if my people from over here go follow me over there. So feel free to do that if you're interested. Those things are all linked in my description and so is my Etsy shop and the link to book my personal styling services. Oh, and uh, I heard if you leave a comment, watch another video like this one and subscribe to the channel, you will be sought out by a magical fish who will grant you three wishes.